Hello everyone, this is Robert Keynes with goldsilverpros.com. I'll be giving an introduction to your feature presentation today. And to start off, I wanted to take a moment to talk about my company at Gold Silver Pros. We provide economic research and insight into the precious metals market. We've been writing for over 10 years, and in 2018 decided to start our website at goldsilverpros.com as an educational service to investors. If you wish to find out more, simply browse to goldsilverpros.com and click on the Who We Are. Today, I'm going to be talking about mining stocks in Finland. It's called An Investor's Perspective on the Central Lapland Greenstone Belt. Many of you may be wondering how many mining companies are actually operating in Finland and what type of mining district does it have? I'm going to be giving you some background on Finland and the mining characteristics. Prior to the 1990s, mining in Finland was conducted by the state. Since then, however, the government has allowed mining companies to come in and produce their vital resources. Finland currently ranks in the top 10 of the stable mining jurisdictions by the Fraser Institute. In addition, Finland also ranks in the top 15 of the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index, ranking very similarly to Canada and just above Australia and the US. I want to take a moment to talk about the geology in Finland. Finland has several different mining districts within the country. They have a robust geologic profile, mostly Archean and Paleoproterozoic. They mostly mine gold, platinum group elements, copper, zinc, and nickel. And you can see here at the top a zone called the Central Lapland Greenstone Belt, which will be the feature topic of this presentation. But also notice that Finland has robust mining areas throughout the country. There is a lot of good mineralization. Finland metals revenue in 2018 can be shown in the following chart. The highest amount of revenue came from nickel at 45%, followed by gold at 26%, and copper at 18%. Cobalt and palladium both make 4%, where platinum comes in just behind at 3%. And a little bit of silver was produced, although it's overall negligible on the chart. So as you can see, Finland has quite a few useful minerals. Exploration expenditures in Finland have stayed around $60 million, with the exception of 2011 and 2012. This is mostly because of the gold price and the influx of resource investment into the overall resource sector, reaching a peak of over $170 million in 2012. You can see that companies are exploring for many resources, including gold, the platinum group metals, zinc, lead, copper, nickel, uranium, diamonds, as well as other minerals as well. In addition, Finland comes in high on the investment attractiveness index. In fact, in 2017, it was ranked as the top jurisdiction in the world for investment based upon the attractiveness index. In 2018, uh, the Catilla mine had 189,000 ounces of gold production. Total cash costs were only 853 ounce gold. And the 2019 forecast was for 175,000 ounce gold production. You can see on the right hand side in this map, there are many operating mines across Finland and there are a lot of advanced stage projects, most of them up near the CGLB area in Northern Finland. There are huge benefits for developers in Finland, including it's a very safe jurisdiction. It has very cheap grid power. It has access to many good roads. It has abundant water. It has a very skilled workforce, has an airport and favorable tax rate. The CLGB area mine successes include the following. It's considered to be an underexplored region of Finland. However, it does hold world-class gold, nickel, copper, and platinum group metal deposits. Several of these deposits include the Catilla underground gold mine, which is owned by Agnico Eagle and has gold reserves of 4.4 million ounces. 2019 production guidance of 175,000 ounces at only 822 ounce gold cash cost, and it has a robust 17 year mine life. The Sakati nickel copper platinum group deposit owned by Anglo American has resources of 44.4 million tons of 1.9% copper 0.96% nickel, 0.04% cobalt, 0.64% grams per ton platinum, and 0.49 grams per ton palladium. Kavitsa nickel copper platinum group mine is owned by Baladin Mineral AB and has mineral resources of 157.8 million tons at 0.23% nickel, 0.33% copper, and 0.3% grams per ton combined gold, platinum, and palladium. According to the University of Oulu, 
The CLGB has a total reported gold endowment of over 10 million ounces. Most of those 10 million ounces lie within the Surakusiko deposit. The university notes, however, that the Mustajarvi orogenic gold occurrence, which lies to the southern border of the CLGB, is in proximity of the first order Benajuku thrust zone, and it shares many of the features of the zones associated with recent gold discoveries. In other words, that means that there is a lot of unexplored geology in the CLGB area, and it has promising prospects of further major gold, copper, nickel, and platinum group metal discoveries. The university goes on to note in their research that this second style of mineralization has yet to be followed up by further drilling, and it indicates the openness of the gold mineralization in all directions, with great potential for more extensive gold mineral mineralized system, especially at depth. So what about the overall infrastructure in Finland? Is it a good place for mines to open up? The country does have a stable network of roads, rail systems, and airports. The school system is globally recognized as generating well-educated graduates supporting various industries. The Geological Survey of Finland, also known as the GTK, employs over 400 people and it provides electronic databases of geological information and surveys, which is very helpful to the junior miners who have very limited exploration budgets. Further, their exploration license provides wide-ranging rights to map, sample, trench, and to drill out a property. Two caveats to mining in Finland are that lane holding costs are comparatively high with the rest of Europe and other mining areas of the world. And it's intended to promote exploration and development of resources quickly. Finland government does not want people just reserving acres and hanging around, not doing anything with them. There are also certain nature protection areas which could hinder access to some of the land within the CLGB zone, although the government of Finland is known to work with the miners in the area where a resource has been found. Hope that this information was helpful to you for your feature presentation coming up next. To end my presentation, I wanted to take a moment to talk about a very special online virtual conference that we'll be hosting for free on August 6th to 7th, 2020. It's called the North American Monetary Metals Summit. And we will have a robust uh, feature of speakers to speak about the precious metal as well as the general economy. Our speakers include many well-known speakers in the economy and the precious metal sector. We will also have a robust agenda of meetings over the two days with access to speak to each of the speakers on each topic, including the precious metals, the economy, cryptocurrencies, and more. We also have many exhibitors signed up for the conference. So if you wish to talk to many of the companies in the resource space, they will be here to answer your questions. And we also have been blessed to be sponsored by many good companies, including precious metals companies, as well as precious metals dealers. We hope to see you there at the conference. Please stay tuned now for your feature presentation.